Welcome, Roy, to sharing your insights and knowledge on HealthFlix. You can begin anytime now. Thank you for coming on. Hello. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay. And thanks for tuning in. I, I am a little bit far away from the screen to do some of the exercises, but I'll come in to speak first of all. Come closer. Um, I've got um, a few things to say about the, the theory behind the practice before we get on to trying out some exercises. Um, a little bit of an intro to me first. My name is Rory Lemon. I am an osteopath as of qualifying in 2014, but I've been working with massage and body work since the year 2000. And it's been a, pro a long sort of lifelong process of looking at the mind body stress and self healing mechanism sort of journey that I've been uh, interested in since, yes, I've run around sort of 24 years old. And um, I was uh, naturally healed with uh, reflexology, in fact. Uh, I had 14 weeks of it as a, as a sort of treatment management plan. And um, I had a lot of emotional and mental stresses and issues at the time. And it all cleared up by natural means, uh, by pure touch and Unmuted. Hi there. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, you're good. Good. Okay, great. Uh, uh, was it was it all going okay straight away? Yeah, continue. Continue. Okay, great. So yes, I became an osteopath um, in 2014, and that confirmed a lot of my um, self theories on self-healing mechanisms as well so it was a it was a journey from becoming healed with natural means through to learning about how to help others as well so it's been a very interesting journey so far and why am I doing this workshop well so there's 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 things I've noticed about how uh, um, different um, practices, movement practices have helped um, us as humans to maintain our health. And there's certain movements that I've noticed that influence the lymphatics specifically from learning about the lymphatic system as part of learning about the whole body. And um, so there's, there's, there's really three different concepts that inspire what I've been um, interested in looking at, which is the lymphatic health exercise approach, which basically is something that I came up with, um, but it's based on the, the concepts that inspire it, if that makes sense. So it's, it's not new information, it's just noticing a way in which we can move healthily that then may inspire a lot of people to um, move when they sort of, have not really had that motivation chance in um, in in the in their lives. So people that do a lot of exercise, for instance, will um, probably not need to think about the lymphatics so much. But knowledge turns into understanding, and understanding turns into um, sort of empowerment as such. So this is why I want to run through the concepts first, which is basically. Um, lymphatics, health and exercise. So before we get on to doing some movement, lots of fun movements, I um, just want to talk about what is health. They're all concepts. Health is a concept. It's kind of ungradable and multifactorial when we're looking at it holistically, which means that it's very difficult to pin down exactly what causes are better health or what causes worse health because there's so many different things that do, that, that do affect it but you can kind of break it down um, into things like moving well breathing well whether you're sleeping well 
whether you are um, whether you have a sense of self-expression in your life or sense of purpose all these different things can make a big difference to whether you feel healthy or not but at the same time it could be that health also you feel unhealthy in the moment through one particular thing that tips the balance or you could feel very healthy by doing one particular good thing that you think is good for you so there's a lot of different things that affect our health and just knowing that for instance moving is one of those factors that could potentially help us then that's why I think that I'm talking about the lymphatic health exercise for those kind of people that need motivation to move and so um Health can change from moment to moment, like I was just saying, um, and sometimes the body can get into a loop. There's these things called feedback loops in the body, which can mean that we can um, speed up too much or slow down too much. And, and the body's trying to find balance naturally um, um, without these external factors that affect it too and internal factors. So, um, Next, the theory of exercise. What is exercise? So I found this very interesting. I've done a few courses with osteopaths um, looking at the neurophysiology of exercise. And uh, exercise is really um, anything that we put ourselves forward for in terms of building a skill or um, to a movement for um, our better our health, if that makes sense. So exercise is... Um, anything we put our mind to or action that we think is going to help us or develop a skill. So the other things with, the, with movement is that movement is task orientated or goal orientated. Um, by that, at nearly all, all movement, the nervous system wants to do movement to, to um, action something. So uh, that's, that's part of a goal. And so, there's, there's interesting things about that, that the exercise really, um, we want to, um, just have to put it, it's, it's basically exercise and movement. So sometimes I'm also dyslexic, so sometimes my mind can go blank if I'm, I'm in the middle of a flow. So. I uh, just had to let you know that that's why I've suddenly just paused for a moment. But the, the main things with, with movement is at the, at the crux of it, because we haven't got much time to talk about the theory behind it, but really at the end of the day, we need to move in ways in which um, makes us feel better, or we've got to get on with daily tasks. Those are the kind of goals that we have in our lives. We've got time to better ourselves um, with strength or endurance or dexterity those are things we want to build or we just need to get on with daily tasks and sy symptoms and things like this can stop us from doing the daily tasks and that's where that's where um, healthcare and things can come in into play but the the main process is that um, yes we want to either do something that we enjoy doing or we need to do something we need to do they're the only real exercises we need to do and it's actually not that useful to do an exercise unless you see the benefit and challenge of doing it to better yourself it's not really worth doing exercises that you don't actually um or you resent doing if that makes sense so going to the gym just to go to the gym's sake uh, because you feel you have to but you don't enjoy it is not the best use of your exercise time doing finding something that you like doing like tennis or snooker, they're all very different in the brain in terms of um, how we go about learning that skill. So find something you enjoy doing and build on it. That's important for your health. And also if there's things that you need to do in your daily life, then um, that you can't do, you need to practice those particular things too. I can see things coming up on the chat. Um, I, I'll look at questions later on. Or, or it after the, it depends on how much time because the talk is very sort of limited. So I'll, I'll come back to looking at any questions that are being popped up at the moment, if that's all right. Um, so really, the, the the other thing that we need to look at in terms of lymphatic health exercise is the lymphatic system. And so we've got to really, I've got to try and really break this down as simply as possible, but give enough 
to understand at the same time because you know the more you look into these things the more complicated and deep it goes but at the end of the day the lymphatic system has got connotations really uh, most people think of it as a a thing about you know detrimental to um, acute or chronic conditions and actually we've all got a, a lymphatic system and it needs to move continuously regularly um, um, and not let it become too stagnant for too long um, otherwise things can build up um, so so basically with the lymphatic system we have um, two major functions we've got how it helps helps it control our blood pressure um, and, the, and the pressurization of our fluid transport systems so fluid can fall out into the into the um, lymphatic system when we're calming down and then fluid gets sucked back into our cardiovascular system our arteries and veins system uh, to bring the the pressure up again i like to explain if you've got like a, a tap and the flow is just flowing and you put your thumb over the over the tap slowly the it seems like it's going well it is going faster but it's the same flow it's just the pressure's changed so things can move faster and so that's what blood pressure is all about as well so the lymphatic system really helps our blood pressure system and um secondly it really um houses a lot of our uh, the parts of our immune system that learn how to fight particular um, microorganisms. So our acquired immune system hangs out there a lot. So the fluids can fall out of the the main the main uh, transport system, the cardiovascular system, and then the army camps of of our, our immune system can search and it's like border checks, and then it helps us to it helps us to fight off and um, illnesses as well so um the the other thing that was really important to bear in mind because lymphatics gets as associated with health and the immune system but the immune system doesn't just fight off stuff so it's there to take out all of the rubbish in our system too so it helps the lymphatic, lymphatic system um, helps our immune system and our immune system helps to take out rubbish as well as repair it's there's the, the immune system's got kind of again funny con connotations but and in fact it's actually different systems within the immune system because it's not all about immunity it's about cleaning and repairing as well so we can get confused sometimes about what's actually happening in the body it's actually trying to heal or is it is it damage and and that's something that's important to bear in mind too that there's there's a lot of healing trying to happen at the same time as everything else so on a side note just as another little function the that the um, fats get absorbed very quickly into the lymphatic system it's just uh, a, lot, a lot of way to think of it as lymphatic system so um it's the it's it's basically a lot of cooked fats are not useful not used can't be used by the body so when we eat a lot of trans fats they're called that can clog up our lymphatic system too just to, just to bear in mind and then that, that can take um, the pressure or too much pressure on the on the immune system and so yeah these three functions of the immune system in, uh, immunity uh, immunity um, taking out the rubbish and repairing if one of these functions is happening too much then then it might not have as much time for the other stuff as well so this is a concept that needs to be looked in further i think in terms of science but it's it's certainly it's kind of obvious in some ways that these processes get somehow uh, compromised by overlook overworking in other areas of those functions if that makes sense as well so the the next thing i wanted to talk about in terms of the theory of lymphatics is is um the anatomy of the lymphatic system is very important to know where it all is and how you can affect it because then you realize what types of exercise movements really help to move it 
Um, so osteopathically, there's really big, deep connected tissue um, pumps, connected tissue pumps in the shoulders, deep in the clavi pectoral fascia, and in the calves. <laughs> So in the calves, there's um, deep connective tissue near the deep veins. And when we pump our calves, it gets a massive fluid drainage up towards the heart, which takes a lot of the pressure out of the, uh, off the heart as well. So if we're staying still a lot, then our heart will be working quite hard to get that, that fluid around. Um, so, so there's the calves, the shoulders, and the central main pump for the lymphatic system is our diaphragm breathing muscle as well. So breathing is heavily related to lymphatic drainage as well, because we heal quite a, quite a lot uh, whilst we sleep, but we're not moving. So there's a very interesting link there that I think that connects the, the diaphragmatic breathing on its own to a lot of lymphatic drainage. And also there's an element of the, the nervous system also um, controlling and uh, getting this pressurization and drainage factors moving too. So, but in terms of exercise, um, we're gonna, uh, I was thinking, thinking about breathing because it's when, when, once you've got the theory behind it, then you can also um, come back to the health of the mind as well. So the health factor of mindful exercise and movement is important. So once you've got the movements in a flow, a lot of them are pumping movements, then um, you can come back to your breath and be mindful and not have to think about what you're doing as a theory as well. So there's the, there's the mindfulness aspect, there's the breathing, and there's the moving and pumping and getting vibrations through the body, which is all factors that really help our lymphatic system. So, um, There, most people have heard about the diaphragm, but basically um, it's very, very, very active and activated when we have our mouth shut. That's the most important thing. If we're breathing through our mouths, we lose pressure and we won't be using our diaphragm as much. And it all just ends up expanding in other places in the lungs rather than drawing the air down. So it's less efficient at getting the air flow moving throughout the lungs as well so we're always going to be where possible with our mouth shut the tongue on the roof of the mouth and the tongue touching the tip the back of the teeth and uh, we're drawing in the air slowly as as slow as possible um when we when when we speed up in exercise we don't want to um start gasping too much but just if, if you notice that you're getting air hunger then you just um go slightly deeper with your breath but it's it's about relaxed um diaphragmatic breathing if you if, if you don't know about um potentially where the diaphragm is and how to breathe just quickly before we go through the, the, the other movements um it's quite good if you take your hands like this and just draw it down and just let your arms crossed just land on the on the ribs there and then you and then breathe in slowly through your nose relax the shoulders and at the same time and you'll feel your belly expand underneath so that's where you're aiming and you can also check by um, putting a hand on the belly and a hand on the chest and just noticing and seeing if you can breathe just with your belly and that's a, that's a whole sort of exercise process that takes time to learn as well so but we're going to move on from that so breathing is important to focus on nasal relaxed slow and with, with, with all these other exercises, again, it's dropping the muscles where possible. When you're learning a move, movement, you're gonna be quite mechanical with it and following it, first of all. But it's once you've got the hang of it, try to just drop your muscles because your muscles will drain much better when they're relaxed too, because forces travel for, through stiff things, much, much like straight through, where if it's more relaxed like water, then you'll get drainage throughout the whole system. So it's important to try to drop and be relaxed when you're doing these motions too. That's enough of the theory now. I hope that wasn't too much, too much information too quick. Um, so let's get on with some fun movements. Um, 
again, we'll look at some questions. If we've got time afterwards, you can always um, send me a message uh, about this later. So we talked about breath control. One of my first and favorite one, if we're waking up the body, these, these key exercises run through uh, from more calm to upbeat. So it's ideal, this, this order is ideal for if you were in the, in the morning waking up or if you're feeling fatigued, wanting to wake up, then do it this order. You can also do things in a way in which you're doing the upbeat stuff and working down to a calm if you're trying to uh, relax yourself down and you're feeling wired, if that makes sense. So first one, I like to call it, I'm just gonna give a bit more space, step back a bit. And um, first one is what I like to call as a, a reach out or reach up and self hug. So we're gonna breathe in slowly, relax the shoulders, reach up, nice stretch, and then breathing out and just come round and V shape your arms. You can drop forwards and just give yourself a little bit of a stretch in the spine, not tilting from the hips too much, just tilt from the middle of the back and breathe in there as well. And give that all a nice stretch as you breathe. And then, and then, and then breathing in. I'm not gonna run through it as a class at the moment. This is just the workshop. So we're, we're, we're gonna run through these exercises, just talking through how you go about them. But in your own time, you can do these as long as you like. Um, so that's to wake up, the, wake up the chest and ribs and really stretch it open and start to get the, the flow going in the thorax there. Um, next, I look at tapping, tapping the sequence. So tapping the tapping the body everywhere creates vibration into these um, these nodes that are there in in the body, the lymphatic nodes, and also on the bone to help the bone um, sort of proliferate as well. So, so I'm gonna tap. First of all, let's just do the lower. So, I'm gonna do the legs. all over, nice flat hands, loose wrists, heavy, heavy but relaxed. Just round all the muscles. By the way, um, very, very quickly as well, no, none of this, none of these exercises are there specifically to address pains, aches or fatigue. Um, and then sometimes this can come hand in hand with um, looking at lymphatic system, but um, or lymphatic system problems or health problems, but th th this isn't aimed, this particular sequence isn't aimed to address those. It's just aimed to get the lymph flow going and showing how to move the lymph efficiently and quickly. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that again a bit later, but just bear that in mind. Um, always move with your in a, in a, or do anything in a pain-free range or non-affecting pain process. And so say for instance, if there's an, if there is an ache and it's, it's, it doesn't get affected by your motion, then it's most likely good. But if you are concerned about aches or pains, then please, you know, there, there's people you can speak to. We'll speak about that again in a bit. So, so we're tapping all over the legs and then heavy, Arms, straight arms into the buttocks here. It really gets into the deep muscles. If you lean backwards, they loosen off, so you can go right into the muscle belly, or you can lean forwards, and it goes more into the tendons of the muscles. And then there's the lower back. So um, the kidneys are where the ribs start. So we're just going to be in the muscle belly here. So you're not going to be bashing the kidneys too much at all when you're doing this. It's just safe to do into the muscle. Lean forwards again, it tightens up. Lean backwards and you can really get into the muscle belly. And then some abdominal, abdominals. Belly. Strong, strong straight fingers, loose wrists onto the rib cage here. Just start to feel a nice sort of tingle or buzz that feels like energy and 
blood flow is moving. To the chest here, again, really short, sort of hard, but relaxed, loose wrists on the fingers there. If it's difficult for your shoulder, you can reach round, just um, joist it here, joist it here, and then you can reach round and use cupping. The back there. Top round. Down the front of the arms, on the back of the arms. And we're brushing over this quite quickly. Sternum. Thyroids around here. It's good to get that shaking, moving. And then forehead onto the cheekbones. Tapping anywhere on the bone is great. It's really stimulates certain hormones like osteocalcin, which is a good, good hormone. It gets created by the bone. Good. Now we're gonna come back to the breath again, just for, it's, it's, this is a useful point where you could check in and just feel how things are flowing. Back to the breath, relaxed. So the next one is the shaking you can shake off. Imagine you've got water on your hands, you're just flicking it off as quick as possible. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the, shake the um, ankles. Imagine you're kicking lots of footballs. Kick, kick, kick. But we're loose and relaxed, very loose, very relaxed. Only use the muscles you need to use for the motions and movements. Next we have um, a thing called, what well, I call bobbing, but it's, it's all part of a practice of getting motion up. It's in, you know, I think they do it in Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga practice. So what we're doing is catching ourselves and pushing ourselves back up in a rhythm just so it creates a nice relaxed bounce and vibration up through the muscles up through the spine this is ideal to do for you know a good couple of minutes at least to really feel a benefit but any of these things if you've got a little bit of time just do 30 seconds where possible Let the head go, let the shoulders go a bit. Okay, so um, whilst you're bobbing, you can also do some humming, which also helps you to be more mindful as well. So humming into uh, down the midline, the vibration of humming can help just, uh, again, with the, the small, tiny vibrations down the center line here. Um, there's also, now we're on to a lot of more pumping exercises. So that's all the sort of wake up small vibration stuff uh, before. Then we have calves. So again, we talked about it before, but there's, there's three different, you can see here, there's, there's three different parts to the calf motion that creates a really good fluid drainage. And that is stretching and squashing off the calf itself the amount of hinge you can do, and the um, element of the of the archway flattening and squashing. You combine all three of those, and you get a massive um, combined pressure change and fluid change. So, um, you, if you don't have a surface, then you can literally walk 
up, squeeze, relax, alternating. Or there's also just more of a, like a toe off jog. Depending on what your capabilities are. There's also going off, as, off the surface, which creates a bigger hinge, but you're not going to do anything that you go too deep into a stretch. It's just about the pump. And um, with any of your tissues, you don't wanna to go too fast into the end range of a stretch. You just want to stay in your mid range and just get flow going. If you're gonna go deep into a stretch, you go slowly just to protect those tendons and those joints. But if you're doing fast pumping, you stay in your mid range. But the further you can go back into the, into a start of a stretch point, the better. So there's also push offs, I like to call them, because uh, it's, it's less pressure. You can, if you're used to doing push ups, then do push ups. This is going to get the shoulders going. But off a surface again, nice and simple. And the, the, the closer you go to a, to an upright surface, the less effort it takes, but the more pump you can still manage. So even here, you're going to get a pump going if you're not used to doing push-ups and you can build your um, endurance to forces like that slowly over time. Next one is a classic Qigong move, which I think is absolutely brilliant. If you've only got a little bit of time, then it's definitely worth doing this kind of motion because again, it's that bobbing technique. We're just going to allow our arms to be very relaxed flicking up, letting them drop. Pretend they're not yours. Drop, flick, drop. And when you get into this motion, you can go for a while and come back to the breath now. Once you've got used to it, relax and slow, deep breath in. And out. So that's lovely. I love that one. That one's brilliant. Um, the next, these where this is where it starts to get a bit fun. So there's three different spinal motions. There's there's two big ligaments on the front of the back of the spine, and when you bend the spine, you get a lot of drainage for the discal area, the joints in the little joints in the back, and where the nerves come out and you get to drain the muscles of, that attach to all the the rectospinal muscles of the that keep you upright in your posture all the time. So, so there's three, three major motions. There's forwards and backwards, when we're bending forwards or leaning backwards. And then there's side bending. And then there's rotational movements. So first of all, um, this, this might look a bit like Mr. Bean at the disco, first of all, but we're going to just find our, find our pelvis and give it a little bit of a tilt. If you're not used to this motion, then just put your, put your hands on, feel, feel your thumb getting lower than your fingers. And just, and if it's still difficult to do that without moving, then just try turning with your hands, turning your pelvis until you get the feeling of the motion and then just do it on its own. Once you've got that motion, you keep going and you're creating a C-shaped spine or an S-shaped spine. So there's C-shape and then S-shape. So you can just bring the shoulders forwards a little bit as we tilt and we can drop the head down slightly as well. We're not pushing too hard ever to into these joints. We just get them moving a little bit. You can slide the hands down the, the thighs if that helps to get that upper body moving. And then once you've got that, you can start to pump the shoulder blades forwards and backwards. So it's S shape, hands come back, C shape, hands come forwards. Nice relaxation, nice relaxation. Drop and breathe. 
and out. You find your own rhythm with all of this, whatever you like, whatever feels good. So that's the CNS dance. And then we have, um, I like to call disco hips, first of all. So we're gonna unlock and lock the knees alternately. We just start to get a motion going on. Again, it get, gets fun now with these ones. Again, not pushing too hard. Put your hands on your hips if you find it difficult to know how to do this. And just feel that your hands are alternating up and down. And then once we've got that going, we can start to bring the elbows up and down as well. So what we're doing is we're creating a stretch here through the ribs, leaning forwards, dropping down at the same time, and then stretching and squashing. So nice and relaxed, don't push it. You can even reach up, reach up. And if you want to do it a bit slower and a more of a squeezy one, that's good. Just reach up, then the knees are knees dropping down there and reaching up there, then knees dropping down there. Reaching up, see if you can see that. And then back to, back to relaxed. Mid range. A little bit of a dance. So finally there's kicking, walking on the spot here first of all, this is a rotational one. So we're kicking up, the knees come straight up. And then we're going to twist a little bit over the knee that's coming up. Twist over, twist over, twist over, relax. This really helps uh, our nervous system realign the contralateral patterns, which means the nervous system crosses over from the brain to the body. Helps with coordination and balance. And then we can tap, tap the feet as well. Same, same rhythm, tapping the feet. So we're stretching the hips, stretch the hips, stretch the hips a little bit. Relax. Keeping that going. The hips are stretching. And we can reach up and away from the toe that's pointing away from us. Just reaching up, reaching up, reaching up. Relax, relax. Some of the, most of these pumping ones, you only need to do 30 seconds of each one. Um, really to be effective. If you're doing this, variety is the most important thing. Variety is a spice of life. So, um, Next one's a classic Qigong one again, that's really good. Um, again, if you just want to wake yourself up really quickly in terms of, well, not necessarily quickly, but you haven't got much time, then drop through the knees a little bit so that you're sitting into your pelvis a lot more than not using your, just looking into your knees. Drop down, then we're just going to lightly swing twist through the back. So the, pel the eyes of the pelvis stay where they are. Eyes of the hips stay forwards. And it's a back twist, lower back. Just allowing it all to swing. Let the arms swing. Let them just flap on the front and the back. A gentle massage for the belly, the gut, the kidneys, to a rhythm. You can go a little bit wider with it and calf pump to the side, twisting. Or back to really relaxed, short, sharp shock movements. Or then just 
mid range, mid speed. Okay, there's another one of my absolute favorites. Um, it's called the Super Brain Yoga Squat. So this has been found to help with uh, children with ADHD and autism when they can actually follow the instructions then they um because they, they they find it very difficult to self-express so there's a lot of stress going on with, with them and um so it, it naturally um clearing that lymphatic drainage to to their head and the blood the blood to their head and getting fresh blood in is going to help them to calm down so it's a very powerful one so I would say it gets your heart rate up very quickly. So I would say if you're not used to this, you've never done it before, please just try one or two or three. Uh, try one, see how you feel. Try two, see how you feel. Try three, see how you feel. And then work up to about 30 seconds worth. But it's not about how many you do. It's about doing one, each one effectively um, and seeing how you go. So all it, all it is, is is essentially a squatting down whilst you breathe in through your nose, whilst you create pressure across with your arms here. So I'm just gonna show you about the squatting. So squatting, typically they talk about toning the, to, toning the, when you're toning the buttocks, you don't want to let your knees come forwards. So when you come down, you do that to, to stretch the glutes. Um, with this one, you want to go as low as you can to compress the inguinal, loads, the inguinal nodes here. Um, just check to see how far you can go, first of all. And it's okay to come onto tiptoes, or if you've got your heels down, that will create more of a uh, stretch through the calves. It's just playing around with how you feel about it. So find out how low you can go. Then we're going to cross the arms over like this into a W shape. And it just creates the pressure, like the thumb I was talking about before, uh, putting the thumb over the tap, create pressure across here. Uh, but not gripping too tightly, it's just the act of doing this that creates the pressure. And then we're going to take hold of our earlobes, pull it out and downwards. And this is this is going to pull into the connected tissue, into where it connects to the sinuses, ear, nose and throat. And the sinuses help to drain the brain. So it's going to lightly pull out and down. And we're going to breathe in slowly and deeply through the nose, down into the squat. And then let that out slowly. And again. And again. So I'm just doing three there. You can see how you go with that. Notice what you felt before and afterwards. And I think that there's, I, I often notice a very clear energy change, energy difference, heart rate goes up and I feel more awake afterwards. Um, more about that later. So, um, very, very, very brilliant exercise this one. Um, the star jump, so simple, very, very effective for our lymphatic system. Um, I, I'm, I'm, not a, not a fan, I'm, I'm not a fan of gadgets, I don't mind them. Um, but if there's anything you can do with just your body, then I'm more into that. And that's what osteopathy is really about, really, is about knowing what the body's capable of doing. And but I, you know, I'm not going to get into debate on whether there's gadgets or not. I'm just saying that if you can do something without gadgets, I'm, I, I'm, I'm more of a fan. So um, if you find jumping if you're concerned about jumping or shock going through, then you, you do, shock, shock is very, light shock is very useful for bone, like we talked about before, uh, and, and the system. But um, if it's difficult for you to, to do star jumps, then look at star pumps instead. So what we're gonna do is come down slowly. If, if you find you need to be near a surface, come down slowly and just come up onto one tiptoe like that. And then the other one like this, and then like that. So once you've got that range of motion going, you're gonna come down and then you're gonna up onto tiptoes down, up onto tiptoes down. Then you're trying to take off and you uh, uh, 
but so it's it's not exactly it's, it's a totally different type of exercise really but it's the same motions for the upper upper body and the calves so it's it's, it's still going to be useful it's still going to be getting the lymphatics going um but a, typically a star jump is not about how high you can jump it's about the twitch to get your feet wide and go as far as is comfortable again and get that spring going on through the calves so um that's the motion of the feet and then relax the shoulders reach out a little bit 30 seconds is enough again make sure you breathe slow through the nose because that's going to stop you from getting out of breath too quickly so as you're doing the jumps last but not least there's um the breath of fire kundalini technique which i find um very useful at the end of a workout just to get things going a little bit um and massaging all of the stomach the heart and the lungs it gets the, the, the again the, the sinus draining um it's basically also kind of massaging your your diaphragm because it gives the diaphragm a rest it's not a normal breathing process because it's firing other muscles to create the airflow and the ventilation so it's more of a ventilatory technique than a breathing technique um, as such so what we're going to do is we're going to put a hand on the belly hand on the chest again and we're going to find find out where our abdominals are, our abdominals are by sucking them in and then back and back so now we know we're contracting our abdominals, we're going to do it faster. Do it as relaxed as possible. And it's just a case of firing the air out of your nose using your abdominals. It's doing it standing. You want to just drop your knees again, give your pelvis a bit of space and relax. And then tilt forward slightly to take the pressure, the stretch out of the front here, just a little bit. And then... Again, that one's, that one's brilliant for getting the lymphatic flow going. Um, just be careful with menstruation, uh, obviously. Um, and there's, that's, that's, really, that's really it. So hope you enjoyed all those exercises. And thank you for coming along. I'm I obviously going to uh, be able to take one-to-one um, -one tuition on the, all this stuff and look at um, address aches and pains and fatigue via my consultations as well. So um, don't suffer in silence with any pain or aches or fatigue. So I hope you all enjoyed that. And do is Heather gonna come back or shall I just leave now? Um, I'll, I'll look at the, and I look at the chat. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? The, the recording will be available on the Health Fix YouTube channel. So hope that was all good. Yeah, you can always message me with more questions. Find me on my contact details on the Health Fix panel site. Thank you very much. Take care.
Phillips today. Also, because I don't